السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا رسول الله وآله وصحبه من والاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد إن شاء الله تعالى tonight we're going to discuss hadith number 17 in the 14 now we hadith before I start the explanation of the hadith tonight I would like inshallah to encourage all of you to stay after the halaqa because we have our dear respected brother Dr. Shelshel is here inshallah ta'ala to give us an update about our funeral, uh, funeral facility downstairs I think you can see the pictures here I haven't actually seen the picture until today there inshallah so good like you can tell there's a lot of work has been done in the masjid alhamdulillah rabbil alameen by the fundraising committee and the funeral committee the uh, maintenance committee as well we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward all of them ya rabbil alameen so if you want to participate in this ajr and you want to build for your akhirah because everybody is going there one day maybe to this room maybe into another room I am going to be going there by the way everybody is going to be going there to that room so we need to inshallah invest in our akhirah by uh, donating generously inshallah ta'ala and our respected Dr. Shalcha inshallah ta'ala is going to give us the updates after the halaqa inshallah ta'ala uh, the hadith says في صحيح الإمام مسلم عن أبي يعلى شداد بن أوس رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله كتب الإحسان في كل شيء وفي رواية على كل خلق الله سبحانه وتعالى has prescribed إحسان Ihsan means perfection. Ihsan means to do everything in the best way possible. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed that ihsan in everything that we do. And in the other narration, ala kulli khalq, meaning ihsan is prescribed, is made obligatory on every human being. Ala kulli khalq. قَلْ فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْقِتْلَةِ If you have to kill, if you have to defend yourself against someone who is attacking you, do it in the best way ever. Even in that time when, when you're defending your own self. فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْقِتْلَةِ وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الذِّبْحَةِ When you sacrifice something, when you slaughter something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, implement ihsan and do it in the best way ever. وَلْيُحِدَّ أَحَدُكُمْ شَفْرَتَهُ وَلْيُرِحْ ذَبِحَتَهُ And then he even gave us some uh, kind of um, instructions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in how to implement ihsan when we sacrifice or slaughter, or, uh, slaughter something. He said you need to sharpen your knife away from your uh, animal that you're going to slaughter. And وَلْيُرِحْ ذَبِحَتَهُ When you hold that animal... Put him in the ground, put him down in the best way ever and make him feel very comfortable. Don't scare him and make it very fast. So uh, last time, because also in this hadith we have the mention of uh, defending ourselves and being uh, having to uh, uh, like uh, maybe fight or, you know, Maybe having to kill someone who is trying to kill us as we discussed last time. And we said the hudud punishments cannot be implemented except in an Islamic state under the ruling of a Muslim ruler. And it has very strict conditions. And we Muslims are required to do our best to find an excuse by every means possible before we implement any had the punishment 
as we have seen, that Sahabi came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking Rasulullah to implement the Hajj on him and Rasulullah asked him to go back five times. Ma'iz wal Ghamidi. And the Ghamidi, he asked her to go back six times. As if he doesn't want to implement the Hajj, he doesn't want to punish people. Alayhi salatu wa salam. When we talk about topics like Hajj punishment, we need to, one, study very well because these topics are difficult, are critical, are so important. Two, we need to be careful and very picky on what we say to people. And that's what I'm trying to do to the best of my ability. Last time I, I told you that we're going to talk today about the had the punishment of apostasy when somebody leaves Islam What's his rule in Islam? And before I go into details, I don't even have to go into details. I just have to ask one question. Do we have any narration in the Islamic heritage, the Islamic tradition, that Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has killed someone just because he left Islam? What's the answer? Do you have any, any answer? We don't have any narration in the Islamic history. If you find one, please bring it up to me. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has implemented had punishment on someone who's left Islam and killed him. You will never find it. You will not find it. Actually, the scholars they talked about this fact. Like Ibn, Ibn al-Arabi fi ahkam al-Quran. When he talked about this, why didn't he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, implement the had punishment on anyone among the hypocrites who actually pretend to be Muslims, but inside of their hearts, they are against Islam, and he knows them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he even told their names to Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, the companion of the secret of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he knows them. And some people in his time, alayhi salatu wasalam, have committed some acts of kufr and he hasn't killed any of them. So why is this? We have three opinions among the scholars why. I'm going to mention two. Al-thani, annahu lam yaqtulhum limaslaha, وَلِتَأَلُّفِ الْقُلُوبِ عَلَيْهِ لِأَلَّا يُنَفِّرَ النَّاسَ عَنْهُ وَقَدْ أَشَارَ صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى هذا المعنى فقال أخاف أن يتحدث الناس أن محمدا يقتل أصحابه صلى الله عليه وسلم What is the meaning of what I'm saying? The main reason why Rasulullah didn't implement the had for Ridda when somebody leaves Islam is because he wanted to soften people's hearts. Because there are some benefits in not implementing the had. And when some Sahaba suggested on him alayhi salatu wasalam, to kill the people who left Islam and the hypocrites, he said, I am scared that people would start saying that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, is killing his companions or his friends. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So if Rasulullah himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not implement the had, please listen to my question carefully. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not implement had on anyone who left Islam, do you think any other human being under any circumstances, in any country, at any time, is allowed to take somebody's life or to end somebody's life because he left Islam? It's just a question needs an answer. That's a question that needs an answer. Rasulullah has never done it. Who, is, who else is given that right to say that I can implement had and in people's lives just because he left Islam? And I don't have to tell you details or about, about what you know the news, right? I don't have to tell you the news and what's happening around us and what extremes do. I don't have to tell you all this. You, you know everything that's going around us. What I'm trying to do here is just to educate myself 
and try to educate my community as well. So you, you reflect on the news, but I'm not here to tell you news. I'm not a, a reporter. I'm, I'm an imam. My job is to uh, say what Allah says. I know what Rasulullah says. What the scholars say? The second reason why Rasulullah never killed anyone who left Islam. قال أصحاب الشافعي. The Shafi'i scholar said, you know why? Because إنما لم يقتلهم لأن الزنديق الذي يسر الكفر ويظهر الإيمان يستتاب ولا يقتل. The scholars of Shafi'i they say the reason is if somebody leaves Islam and he doesn't spread uh, that among people that you know what Islam doesn't make any sense you need to leave this religion you need to become atheist just like me he doesn't do that he just left Islam his ruling in Islam according to Shafi'iya here is al-istitaba istitaba comes from the word tawbah that you give him time to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how is he going to repent you have to open a, a discussion with him you have to open a conversation with him you have to discuss with him, give him evidences. Don't give him evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because he disbelieves in them. Try to convince him otherwise. I mean, with some other evidence from outside of the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Logically, just try to convince him logically if you can. But if you can't make him repent after a long discussion, qala ashabu shafi'i wa la yuqtal. His ruling is not to be killed. So I don't want to go into too much details. I just wanted to give you this one fact that Rasulullah has never done this in his life. I'm not going to, I'm not going to mention, in his, I, you know, last time I told you I'm going to mention the old the fiqh and the new fiqh. Remember that? I'm not going to. I don't need to. Because it's just that one evidence is more than enough that Rasulullah has never done this alayhi salatu wasalam. And if somebody has questions he wants to ask in private or after the halaqah, he can come ask but we don't have time to give so much details. Why did I talk about uh, the ruling of uh, ruling of Ridda, believing Islam? One, because I told you I'm going to finish it from the hadith number 14 last time. Two, because it's mentioned in this hadith, وَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسَنُ الْقِتْلَةِ So let's just go very quickly through the hadith. Ihsan is obligatory in everyone. Ihsan means perfection. When you go to work, you need to perfect your work as much as you can. I'm not claiming that I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm perfect or I'm not claiming this, I'm not saying this at all. But what I, I can say for sure 100% is I've never came to this masjid, I've never come to this masjid, I've never stood in this member without preparing myself. I have never, wallahi al I have never stood up in this qibla except for very few times I can count on uh, uh, my fingers. I've never stood in this qibla in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan without preparing the ayat that I'm going to recite because I don't want someone to correct me. I don't like that. In the halaqa, I've never given any khutbah unless I make sure that the translation of the ayah makes sense, the translation of the hadith makes sense, the opinions of the scholars that I choose make sense. And I have to be very, very picky sometimes. Like in topics that, like, the, like apostasy, for example. I have to be very picky in what I'm saying. That is Ihsan. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to do. The brothers are serving in the masjid. Brothers who did, who finished this funeral room. They're also making Ihsan. They're trying to serve as much as they can. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them to implement Ihsan. Allahumma amin ya rabbil amin. So Ihsan is obligatory in everyone. When you pray, you need to implement perfection as much as you can. No one is perfect. You know what? I have a, one of my family members. She is a perfect, perfectionist. Perfectionist. She has a problem. Sometimes she repeats her wudu three, four times. And sometimes when we pray together, she leaves the prayer in the middle to go renew her wudu because she thinks that she has nullified her wudu somehow. And sometimes she comes to me crying until I felt one day she's going to leave prayer. She's a perfection, perfectionist. She's trying to be perfect in everything. She always has a doubt in her mind that she hasn't done a good job. 
there's something wrong that she has done. She has to repeat the wudu again. She has to repeat the prayer again. She doesn't know how many rak'at she did. Sometimes she cries. I took a lot of time with her to tell her that Islam is much easier than this. Until now, alhamdulillah, she started to take things easy. So we're not going to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. Because I told you before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a king. He's the king of kings. And we are standing outside of his door. Everybody's knocking. Some people have gold in their hands as a gift to give the king. Some people have silver. Some people have wood. Some people, excuse me, they have trash. And you know what? We're all standing out of the king's door. And you know what? We're competing with who? You know we're competing with who? With Rasulullah Muhammad and the prophets and messengers and the Sahaba and the Ummahat al Mu'mineen. We're competing with those people. We're competing with the angels. So who we are? We're very small. So we're not perfect. Nobody can claim that he's perfect. We're very small. The people that we're competing with are far ahead of us, like way ahead of us. We cannot even reach them. But try as much as you can. Al-Ihsan wajibun fi kulli shay'a. In this hadith also we can see the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards animals even when we slaughter them. In this hadith, also last point, we see the importance of giving examples. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the instruction, Al-Ihsan is obligatory in every single action. He gave examples. When you have to defend yourself, when you have to slaughter an animal alayhi salatu wasalam. So it's also one of the benefits that we can take from this hadith. If you're giving da'wah, if you're giving a lecture, you need also to give examples, not only giving instructions and without examples. Tayyib. These are very uh, brief uh, points. I have a lot of other uh, points to mention, but I don't want to make it long because I want to give time for uh, to Dr. Sarcha, inshallah ta'ala, to explain and talk about the funeral facility and see what he has to say, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khayran. Wa quru qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Shadu wa la ilaha illa astaghfiru wa tubu ilayka. I would request everyone please to remain seated until... Uh, the Dr. Shasha comes to talk. We'll just make a quick dua, inshallah, until he comes. Allahumma laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajika wa la'adhi sultanik. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fil-Awaleen. Salli alayhi fil-Akhirin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Allahumma alimna min dinina ma jahilna wa anfa'na ya Rabbana bima alamtana wa zidna ya Rabbana ilma. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Wa salli lahum ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in.